In today's video, we're going to be having a quick look at SwitchBot's latest hub. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. SwitchBot have just released their brand new smart home hub and it features some major improvements over its predecessor. The most obvious new improvements and changes are that of the new LED screen and the new capacitive buttons on the front of it. In addition to this new fresh design and housing, the hub also features Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, infrared and a handful of sensors such as a temperature sensor, a humidity sensor and also a look sensor. The hub also supports Matter, but we'll get back to this a little later on. Inside of the Hub 2's box, you'll obviously find the main Hub 2 unit itself, as well as a power plug for whichever region you're in, a USB-C to USB-A power cable, some 3M sticky tabs, and also an instruction booklet. One interesting feature about the power cable is the fact that it's got this little block on it, and inside of the little block is actually the temperature and humidity sensors, and SwitchBot have said that the reason that they've put this on the power cable, as opposed to just housing it all in the main unit, is to just separate that so the internal temperature isn't going to affect any of the readings you're getting from those sensors. Now, that is quite cool, and it's a very SwitchBot thing to do, to just do something a little bit different. I've not seen that before on another hub or another temperature sensor, so it is quite cool. You do have to be aware though that if you damage that cable or you lose it, you're not going to be able to make use of those features. The cable that you get with the hub is actually quite long and should you actually need to extend it, you've got a USB-A on the end so you can just hook up any old USB extension cable and just connect it up like that. The Hub 2's overall design is drastically different to the original Hub Mini and I'm not actually sure why it was called the Mini because I don't ever think there was a large or a plus or a max or whatever naming convention SwitchBot uses. Actually, there was that cloud one. They did like a, a cloud hub. Do you remember that? It was like a multicolored cloud thing. I, I never got one of those. Thanks, SwitchBot. Either way, the design from the old hub and the new one is drastically different, and you're never ever going to get them mixed up. Also, you won't mix up the cables because the new hub finally features a USB C, and it's got that little connector that we talked about. I, I don't mean connector, I mean. Um, block thing. I'm not actually sure what they call it, the little temperature and humidity sensor that's on a block on the power cable. The Hub 2 comes in a matte white finish and the main focal point of the device is this new LED screen. On this screen you'll be able to see the temperature and also the humidity for the current room that it's in and just below the temperature you'll be able to see an off and on button. These buttons can be used to turn the screen on and off and you can also use these buttons to actually trigger two different scenes using the SwitchBot app. The Hub 2 definitely feels a lot more premium over its predecessor and it should do really because it's now double the price. If you're interested in picking one of these up, you can pick them up for around £79, around $69 and if you are interested in one, if you make use of the link in the description below, you can save yourself an additional 15% on checkout. If you make use of any of SwitchBot's other products, then you'll be well aware of the fact that they've absolutely nailed the whole setup process and for the Hub 2, there's no difference. With the Hub 2, it is just a simple case of plug the device in, you'll see the screen power up, and then if you open up the SwitchBot app, you'll instantly find that device and you will immediately be able to connect it and add it to your SwitchBot account. By making use of the SwitchBot app, you're able to access the Hub's three main sensors, which are temperature, humidity, and Lux. Using the Lux sensor, you're able to get the light level for whichever room the Hub's currently in, and you can use this light level in your various Hub automations, and you can also do the same thing with either temperature and humidity. All three sensors allow you to visualise all of the data from the sensors, and if you wanted to, you could actually export this data out, so if you wanted to import that into a database or put it somewhere to do data reading things, then you can totally do that. In my testing, all three sensors seem to be pretty accurate, and they all update really quickly, especially the look sensor. As well as being able to view the sensors and visualize all the information, using the SwitchBot app you can also configure the hub a little bit, so you can do things like turn on and off the sound effects of the hub. You can also set those buttons that I mentioned before, so with the buttons by default they turn the screen on and off, so you can either disable that or you can keep it on, and you can also assign scenes to the individual buttons. Now these scenes are specifically tied to your SwitchBot account, so they are only scenes that your SwitchBot devices can interact with and they have to be created within the SwitchBot ecosystem. 
but it would be nice to see this available to other third party apps or other third party services. I think Switchbot have done a great job with the UI for the Hub too. When you open it up in the app, you can easily just visualize everything that's going on. Up at the top, you can just see all the information about your sensors. Straight there in the middle, you can see the infrared remotes and any remote you've got set up. Then at the bottom, you can see those two buttons on the front. And if you've got anything set up and assigned to them, you'll be able to see it there. And if we just circle back to the infrared remotes, Using the infrared remote, you're able to add any existing remotes that you might have so the hub can control that device. And if it's a popular brand, then chances are that remote's already been added in. So you can just add that as a profile and start making use of all the buttons and functions. And if it's not, you can just simply clone a command from a remote or some other infrared device. And then your hub can start sending that command out. Personally, I don't make use of all that many IR devices, but interestingly enough, underneath my desk, I actually make use of the Hub Mini, and I use this Hub Mini to actually control my soundbar. So I just send a command to the Hub, and then that just sends out an infrared command. And I tried this out with the Hub too, and as expected, it just worked. If you are big on IR and you use them a lot, or you previously used the Hub Mini, then you'll also be happy to know that the infrared range on the Hub 2 has actually been expanded, so it goes much further than it originally did. And I feel like I just explained expanding to you. <laughs> and I guess while we're on the topic of controlling devices, that kind of leads us nicely on to smart home control. So with the Hub 2, like the Hub Mini, it can be integrated into your Amazon Echoes and your Google Homes, and you can start making use of the features there. But with the Hub 2, there's also Matter. As we all know, Matter is still being developed and parts of the standards are still being ironed out, and lots of the devices are still not even implemented into Matter's spec yet, so lots of things just don't work yet. Well, with the Hub 2, the Matter integration is actually in beta still, so don't expect everything to work just yet. To get started with Matter on the Hub, you'll need to head into the Hub settings and select Matter. When you do this, it will get you to do a small update, and once it's updated, you'll be able to access the Matter tab. From here, you can view the Hub's Matter code. You can also save an image of it if you want to, or copy the code if you want to paste that into another app. At the bottom of the Matter page, you'll see a big red button that says Add Secondary Device, and if you select this, you'll be able to add additional devices to your hub. So any device you've got paired to your hub will pass through with Matter as long as you've added it in this secondary device tab. At the time of recording this video, I think the only devices that are currently supported as secondary devices are the Curtains 1 and 2 and also the brand new Tilt Blind Motor. Switchbot have said that they're going to be rolling support out to their other Bluetooth based devices and over time we'll be able to start adding those other devices but Matter is still very early on so expect it to just take a little while. For smart home control I've already mentioned Amazon and Google but it is in fact possible to get this into Apple Home but you will need to make use of Matter to do this so let's have a quick look at that now. In your hub settings if you jump into Matter you'll see the hub's Matter QR code and if you select the little copy code button, this will copy the matter code to your clipboard. Then at the top of the page, you'll see a matter configuration option. And if you select this, it will open up a new page that will give you a bit of information like how to put the hub into pairing mode. And I already mentioned this, this is where you need to press both buttons for 15 seconds. So if you put your hub into pairing mode, then at the bottom of that page, you'll see a big red connect button. When you select that, it will jump you into the Apple Home app. And from here, you can just click the add button at the top right corner and choose to add an accessory. You'll then have an option to enter the hub's matter code. And when you do this, it will link the hub to your Apple Home. Once you've done that, your hub will then be visible inside of your Apple Home. And you can view things like your temperature and humidity sensors. And you can also view and control any of the child devices that you added. So things like the curtain robots or the tilt and blind controllers. There are, however, still a few things missing. So things like the look sensor and also those two front buttons that are at the front of the device. I don't think those features are missing just because of Matter either, even though it probably is just because Matter doesn't support them yet. And I'm saying that because they're also not in the Amazon or Google apps yet. So SwitchBot, if you're watching, get those features added. And just to stay on topic of features for SwitchBot to add, this one is probably gonna be a bit hard because the product's already been made, but maybe in your next hub switch bot, you could add RF because it'd be really cool if this thing could do IR and RF and it would just make me replace something like the RM4 Pro from Broadlink. I could just totally swap that device out for this one. 
Also, we need a really good local API to actually control this hub, so we can start making use of all of the hub's features within other softwares like uh, Home Assistant. In my matter testing for the hub, I could view the hub's temperature and its humidity, and I could also view the secondary device that I added, which was one of the Curtain 2 robots, and although I could view it, I couldn't reliably control it. When you select the Curtain robot in the Apple Home app, you get a little slider which I guess is to adjust how open or closed the curtains are, but for me this just didn't work. When I did one of those actions, it would say either opening or closing, but it would never actually do that action. If I was on the main home dashboard and I just selected it, occasionally it would open or it would close, but more than often it would just do nothing. So it doesn't work reliably just yet. This is definitely one to take note of if you're planning on picking this thing up specifically for Apple control because it's not there just yet or at least at the time of this video it wasn't there yet. For some additional matter fun I thought I'd also try and add the hub into Home Assistant using the Home Assistant matter integration just to see if it would work and yeah it, it works. You can add it in and you can again view the temperature and view the humidity but they don't name themselves and it just doesn't work properly so I wouldn't add it into Home Assistant just yet. All in all, this is another great SwitchBot product, and if you're already in SwitchBot's ecosystem and you're looking to be able to try out Matter and some of the other new features that I've talked about today, then this hub is definitely worthwhile the upgrade. Let me know in the comments below any new features or changes you'd like to see added in some future updates. And while you're down there, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to drop me a like. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. You'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons. And if you're interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find a link to my Patreon in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.